Early Life Willis was born on March 19, 1955, in Adaroberstein, West Germany. His father, David Willis, was an American soldier. His mother, Marlene Kay, was German, born in Kaufungen, near Kassel. Willis is the oldest of four children, he has a sister, Florence, and a brother, David. His brother Robert died of pancreatic cancer in 2001, aged 42. After being discharged from the military in 1957, Willis's father took his family back to Carneys Point, New Jersey. Willis has described himself as having come from a long line of blue-collar people. His mother worked in a bank and his father was a welder, master mechanic, and factory worker. Willis attended Penn's Grove High School in his hometown, where he encountered issues with a stutter. He was nicknamed Buck Buck by his schoolmates. Finding it easy to express himself on stage and losing his stutter in the process, Willis began performing on stage, and his high school activities were marked by such things as the drama club and student council president. After high school, Willis took a job as a security guard at the Salem Nuclear Power Plant and transported work crews at the DuPont Chambers Works Factory in Deepwater, New Jersey. After working as a private investigator, a role he would play in the television series Moonlighting as well as in the 1991 film, The Last Boy Scout, Willis turned to acting. He enrolled in the drama program at Montclair State University, where he was cast in the class production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Willis left school in his junior year and moved to New York City, where in the early 1980s he supported himself as a bartender at the West 19th Street Art Bar Kamikaze. After multiple auditions, Willis made his theater debut in the off-Broadway production of Heaven and Earth. He gained more experience and exposure in Fool for Love and in a Levi's commercial. Willis also played a lead role in the off-Broadway production of writer-director Dennis Watlington's Bullpen for four years. Relationships and Children At the premiere for the film Stakeout, Willis met actress Demi Moore. Willis married Moore on November 21, 1987, and had three daughters, Rumor Willis, B, August 16, 1988, Scout LaRue Willis, B, July 20, 1991, and Tallulah Bell Willis, B, February 3, 1994, before the couple divorced on October 18, 2000. The couple gave no public reason for their breakup. Regarding the divorce, Willis stated, I felt I had failed as a father and a husband by not being able to make it work. He credited actor Will Smith for helping him cope with the situation. After their breakup, rumors persisted that the couple planned to remarry, until Demi Moore married Ashton Kutcher. Willis has maintained a close relationship with both Moore and Kutcher, even attending their wedding. Willis was engaged to actress Brooke Burns until they broke up in 2004 after 10 months together. He married model Emma Hemming in Turks and Caicos on March 21, 2009. Guests included his three daughters, Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher. The ceremony was not legally binding, so the couple wed again in a civil ceremony in Beverly Hills, six days later. The couple has two daughters, Mabel Ray Willis, B, April 1, 2012, 56, and Evelyn Penn Willis, B, May 5, 2014. Career Willis upon receiving an Emmy Award in 1987 for Best Actor in Moonlighting. Willis left New York City and headed to California to audition for several television shows. In 1984, he appeared in an episode of the TV series Miami Vice, titled No Exit. In 1985, he was the guest actor in the first episode of the 1980s revival of The Twilight Zone, Shatterday. He auditioned for the role of David Addison Jr. of the television series Moonlighting, 1985-89, competing against 3,000 other actors for the position. The starring role, opposite Cybill Shepard, helped to establish him as a comedic actor, with the show lasting five seasons. During the height of the show's success, beverage maker Seagram hired Willis as the pitchman for their Golden Wine Cooler products. The advertising campaign paid the rising star between $5 to $7 million over two years. In spite of that, Willis chose not to renew his contract with the company when he decided to stop drinking alcohol in 1988. Willis had his first starring role in a feature film in the 1987 Blake Edwards film Blind Date, with Kim Basinger and John LaRoquette. Edwards cast him again to play the real-life cowboy actor Tom Mix in Sunset, 1988. 
However, it was his then unexpected turn in the film Die Hard, 1988, as John McClane that catapulted him to movie star status. He performed most of his own stunts in the film, and the film grossed $138,708,852 worldwide. Following his success with Die Hard, he had a supporting role in the drama in country as Vietnam veteran Emmett Smith and also provided the voice for a talking baby in Look Who's Talking, as well as its sequel Look Who's Talking 2. In the late 1980s, Willis enjoyed moderate success as a recording artist, recording an album of pop blues titled The Return of Bruno, which included the hit single Respect Yourself, promoted by a spinal tap, like rockumentary parody featuring scenes of him performing at famous events including Woodstock. He released a version of the Drifters song Under the Boardwalk as a follow-up, which got to number two in the UK Top 40, though was less successful in the US Willis returned to the recording studio several times afterward. 1990s Having acquired major personal success and pop culture influence playing John McClane in Die Hard, Willis followed up by playing him again in the sequels Die Hard 2 in 1990 and Die Hard with a Vengeance in 1995. These first three installments in the Die Hard series grossed over 700 million US dollars internationally and propelled Willis to the first rank of Hollywood action stars. In the early 1990s, Willis's career suffered a moderate slump starring in flops such as The Bonfire of the Vanities, Striking Distance, and a film he co-wrote titled Hudson Hawk, among others. He starred in a leading role in the highly sexualized erotic thriller Color of Night, 1994 another box office failure, it was savaged by critics, but did well in the home video market and became one of the top 20 most rented films in the United States in 1995. In 1994, he had a supporting role in Quentin Tarantino's acclaimed Pulp Fiction, which gave a new boost to his career. In 1996, he was the executive producer of the cartoon Bruno, the kid which featured a CGI representation of himself. He went on to play the lead roles in 12 Monkeys, 1995, and The Fifth Element, 1997. However, by the end of the 1990s, his career had fallen into another slump with critically panned films like The Jackal, Mercury Rising, and Breakfast of Champions, saved only by the success of the Michael Bay-directed Armageddon which was the highest-grossing film of 1998 worldwide. The same year his voice and likeness were featured in the PlayStation video game Apocalypse. In 1999, Willis then went on to the starring role in M. Night Shyamalan's film, The Sixth Sense. The film was both a commercial and critical success and helped to increase interest in his acting career. 2000s Willis after a ceremony where he was named Hasty Pudding Theatrical's Man of the Year in 2002. In 2000, Willis won an Emmy for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series for his work on Friends, in which he played the father of Ross Geller's much younger girlfriend. He was also nominated for a 2001 American Comedy Award, in the funniest male guest appearance in a TV series category, for his work on Friends. Also in 2000, Willis played Jimmy the Tulip Tedeschi in The Whole Nine Yards alongside Matthew Perry. Willis was originally cast as Terry Benedict in Ocean's Eleven, 2001, but dropped out to work on recording an album. In Ocean's 12, 2004, he makes a cameo appearance as himself. In 2007, he appeared in the Planet Terror half of the double feature Grindhouse as the villain, a mutant soldier. This marked Willis's second collaboration with director Robert Rodriguez, following Sin City. Willis has appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman several times throughout his career. He filled in for an ill David Letterman on his show February 26, 2003, when he was supposed to be a guest. On many of his appearances on the show, Willis stages elaborate jokes, such as wearing a day-glow orange suit in honor of the Central Park Gates, having one side of his face made up with simulated buckshot wounds after the Harry Whittington shooting, or trying to break a record, parody of David Blaine, of staying underwater for only 20 seconds. On April 12, 2007, he appeared again, this time wearing a Sunjaya Malakar wig. His most recent appearance was on June 25, 2007, when he appeared wearing a mini turban strapped to his head to accompany a joke about his own fictional documentary titled An Unappealing Hunch, a wordplay of an inconvenient truth. Willis also appeared on Japanese Subaru Legacy television commercials. Tying in with this, Subaru did a limited run of Legacies, 
badged Subaru Legacy Touring Bruce in honor of Willis. Willis has appeared in four films with Samuel L. Jackson, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1, Pulp Fiction, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and Unbreakable, and both actors were slated to work together in Blackwater Transit, before dropping out. Willis also worked with his eldest daughter, Rumor, in the 2005 film Hostage. In 2007, he appeared in the thriller Perfect Stranger, opposite Halle Berry, the crime-slash-drama film Alpha Dog, opposite Sharon Stone, and marked his return to the role of John McClane in Live Free or Die Hard. Subsequently, he appeared in the films What Just Happened in Surrogates, based on the comic book of the same name. Willis was slated to play U.S. Army General William R. Pierce and director Oliver Stone's Pinkville, a drama about the investigation of the 1968 My Lai Massacre. However, due to the 2007 Writers Guild of America strike, the film was cancelled. Willis appeared on the 2008 Blues Traveler album North Hollywood Shootout, giving a spoken word performance over an instrumental blues rock jam on the track Free Willis, Ruminations from Behind Uncle Bob's Machine Shop. In early 2009, he appeared in an advertising campaign to publicize the insurance company Norwich Union's change of name to Aviva. 2010s Willis starred with Tracy Morgan in the comedy Cop Out, directed by Kevin Smith, and about two police detectives investigating the theft of a baseball card. The film was released in February 2010. Willis appeared in the music video for the song Stylo by Gorillaz. Also in 2010, he appeared in a cameo with former Planet Hollywood co-owners and 80s action stars Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film The Expendables. Willis played the role of generic bald man Mr. Church. This was the first time these three legendary action stars appeared on screen together. Although the scene featuring the three was short, it was one of the most highly anticipated scenes in the film. The trio filmed their scene in an empty church on October 24, 2009. Willis next starred in Red, an adaptation of the comic book miniseries of the same name, in which he portrayed Frank Moses. The film was released on October 15, 2010. Willis starred alongside Bill Murray, Edward Norton, and Francis McDormand in Moonrise Kingdom, 2012. Filming took place in Rhode Island under the direction of Wes Anderson, in 2011. Willis returned in an expanded role in The Expendables 2, 2012. He appeared alongside Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the sci-fi action film, Looper, 2012, as the older version of Gordon-Levitt's character, Joe. Willis teamed up with 50 Cent in a film directed by David Barrett called Fire with Fire, starring opposite Josh Duhamel and Rosario Dawson, about a fireman who must save the love of his life. Willis also joined Vince Vaughn and Catherine Zeta-Jones in Lay the Favorite, directed by Stephen Frears, about a Las Vegas cocktail waitress who becomes an elite professional gambler. The two films were distributed by Lionsgate Entertainment. Willis reprised his most famous role, John McClane, for a fifth time, starring in A Good Day to Die Hard, which was released on February 14, 2013. In an interview, Willis said, I have a warm spot in my heart for Die Hard. It's just the sheer novelty of being able to play the same character over 25 years and still be asked back is fun. It's much more challenging to have to do a film again and try to compete with myself, which is what I do in Die Hard. I try to improve my work every time. The character of Lex Luthor in Injustice, Gods Among Us performed by Mark Ralston was modeled after Willis with the character's signature film called Die Hard. On October 12, 2013, Willis hosted Saturday Night Live with Katy Perry as a musical guest.